Welcome to another Takeout Church. We have been learning all about how the Bible is our guide to survive and thrive. So we learned about how it was the truth and it's for all time. And last week we learned that the Bible is like a seed and it gets planted in our hearts. Now today we're learning about how the Bible is like a sharp sword. And we can use it against our enemy Satan. And in order to figure out how the Bible is like a sharp sword, we need to figure out how a sword is used. Now we're so lucky because we have a kid at Westgate that is in fencing. So she is going to help us learn a little bit more about how to use our swords. Now, most often when we think about using a sword, we're thinking about using it to attack. Swords are not just for attacking though. They are also used for defense. Sometimes warriors face an enemy that they couldn't beat on their own. Kind of like Satan, we can't beat him on our own. So in those cases, attack is not always the best way to go. So the best offense is a good defense. So instead of a full out attack, sometimes a more effective way to use the sword against an enemy is to put some distance between you and the enemy. Now, if I was facing an enemy and I knew I couldn't defeat him on my own, it makes way more sense for me to put some distance between us, to back up, and then I can regroup. But if I just took off and ran, then the chances are they're going to catch up with me and he would be able to just finish me off. But my sword would give me the confidence to back off, distance myself, and regroup. Now maybe I would back away and there were others on my side that were able to help me. Maybe I would be able to move back to where I knew I had some other weapons that I could use. Maybe backing away would just buy me some time, but either way, the sword has given the warrior confidence to be able to back away from a powerful enemy. So that is point number one. The sword is excellent at putting distance between us and our enemies. No enemy wants to get too close to a swinging sword. Now the sword of the spirit, the Bible, is like a swinging sword. Satan cannot fight against the truth of the Bible. It overpowers his attack. So now our sword is actually the Bible, the word of God. And it has tremendous power in our lives to fight Satan off because it tells us the difference between right and wrong. It's the last thing that Satan wants us to know. Because when we read our Bibles regularly and often, we can use our swords to back away from Satan and put distance between him and us. And because it will give us the confidence to resist him, we need to know what it says. So in the Bible, James 4, 7 says this, resist the devil and he will flee from you. When we use the Bible to identify right from wrong, we are resisting Satan. So it's like we can be giving distance between us and the devil. The Bible says that when we do that, he will flee from us. The Bible exposes Satan because it shows us right from wrong. When you read the, body, the Bible and study your Bible, you're swinging your sword. So I'm gonna say that again. So think about this because you're going to want to call me or email me. You can tell me over the phone or maybe your parents can send an email and that's going to give you points that you can then trade in for some souvenirs later on. So listen very, very closely. When you read and study your Bible, you're swinging your sword. Now, another way that the sword is great at helping to defeat a powerful enemy is to attack. Now, not with the purpose of killing your opponent, but with the purpose of disarming your opponent. By separating a warrior from his sword, you can win the battle. And that is point number two. The sword is excellent at disarming the enemy. So the sword and the spirit works the same way. 
this is where the power of the Bible really comes into play. So there's not an attack that Satan can throw at you that the Bible can't disarm. Quite often, Satan is going to be like whispering things in your ears and encouraging you to disobey your parents. They might say things like, oh, I know that you're not supposed to watch R-rated movies, but they're not here anyway, let's just do it. And so you can either take the hit from Satan or you can fight back. So first you ID the attack and you know it's Satan because you know it's wrong. You know you're not supposed to watch R-rated movies. Your parents told you you weren't supposed to. So you unleash the truth. You know it's right. Ephesians 6 verse 1 says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. This sword disarms Satan. Or maybe Satan's telling you to ignore someone on the playground and someone who really needs a friend. Satan says something like, oh, you don't want to be caught dead with that loser. So you can either take the hit or you can fight back. So unleash the truth. John 13, 34 says, a new commandment I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. The sword disarms Satan. Using the Bible to disarm Satan when he attacks is incredibly powerful. The sword of the spirit is excellent at disarming the enemy. Now there's one final point that I want to make about the sword. So point number three, you need to know your sword. You can know points one and two, but if you don't actually know your sword, you haven't trained, you haven't practiced, and haven't studied, it's just a piece of sharp metal. Now the same works with the sword of the spirit. If you don't read and study the Bible, don't do it, or at least you don't even know how to find things in it, it's just another book on the shelf. Its power comes when it's in the hands of somebody who knows it and knows how to use it. So in your bags, there are some little cards in your bags and they've got books of the Bible, and there's all sorts of games that will help you learn the books of the Bible in it. So the uh, instructions that have come into your bags, they give you all sorts of games that you can play. So that's one of the ways that we can learn how to use our Bible. We can start to find it. So if, if I told you, oh, John 13, 34 was such a perfect verse to help you with that situation, you would know how to find it. So I want you to make sure that you go into your bags and you find the cards so you can play those games. If you don't already have your your bag, make sure you come see me in the office so that you can get one of those. So let's review our three points about the sword. So number one, the sword of the spirit is excellent at putting distance between you and your enemy. When you need it, you're swinging a sword. Now the sword of the spirit is also excellent at disarming the enemy. That's point number two. When Satan attacks, don't take the hit. Pull out your sword and disarm him. And point number three, you need to know your sword. And so all year long, we're going to be looking at this sword and figuring out how we can use it in our lives. And the things in your bags and the activity books and when you come on site on Sunday mornings, all those things will help you get to know your sword a little bit better. So we look forward to seeing you as you get to know your sword.